did a wonderful, wonderful, fantabulous job at the uh, organizing the John Cotter Memorial Marker Ceremony this past weekend. I appreciate you for that. Thank you. Thank you. More than anything, though, and I appreciate that, I we want to thank you, uh, all of you who showed up, 50 plus people who yes, came 50 plus. to the Haven of Rest Cemetery for the John Carter Street. Um, um, Memorial Marker Ceremony and Unveiling. Uh, we really want to, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for being there. You could have been anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, it was in the 90s as far as the heat index. However, it that it heat high. index uh, <laughs> had nothing for, for us. It was minuscule compared to what John Carter went through. Yes. Um, and so I know you feel the way I feel, which is why you were there. Um, in solidarity, in, in humanity, in love, and respect for the life of another human being uh, by the name of John Carter. So I want to, yeah. we want to thank you. We appreciate you for being there. And we want you to know that we truly do. We also want to thank all of the speakers and everyone who participated. Uh, we wanted to kind of delve into something really quickly because um, we a lot of questions. We've, we've had asked. a lot of questions. There's a lot of a lot of that's been reported, um, and also uh, spoken of about John Carter. And I'm gonna let Kwame jump into it a little bit, being the historian that he is, and also um, working with one of the leading historians, Stephanie Harp, on a program that I'll let him talk to you about or give the name. Uh, uh, just recently, well, this past summer that they did uh, talking about John Carter. And there were there were not just one, there were two or three more John Carters during that time. Um, um, and so I'm, I'm going to let you jump into it and kind of well, talk more about Well, the program that you're talking about is with the Central Arkansas Library System. Yes. Uh, and it was a series called Race, Rage, and Resistance. Mm -hmm. And Stephanie Harp and I, us both being descendants of that 1927 atrocity that happened mm -hmm. here in Little Rock, me uh, being the grandnephew of Lonnie Dixon, mm -hmm. uh, and she being the uh, great-granddaughter of the uh, Pulaski County Sheriff uh, who uh, was there at the time. Mm -hmm. And both of us are historians and she's actually been researching this incident for 12 years, I believe it's 12 right. years. Mm -hmm. And so she's mm -hmm. the leading expert in the United States uh, on uh, the Lonnie Dixon, uh, John Carter, uh, incident in Little Rock. In Not the only expert, but one of the them leading, that, that definitely the has been yeah, yeah, taking the, the, the lead. In. <laughs> so one thing that uh, became evident to both of us in even preparing, uh, we took several months to prepare for our talk. Mm -hmm. And one thing that became evident to us is that there, in the Little Rock directory at that time, there were actually a total of seven people named John Carter, ranging in age from, I think, 16 all the way up to 50. Mm. Uh, and wow. it has been believed that the John Carter that was lynched was a 38-year-old gentleman who was married with children. Mm -hmm. uh, we've since come to confirm that that John Carter is not actually the one that was lynched, but rather one that disappeared during that same time period. Mm -hmm. And we believe that his disappearance is somehow linked mm -hmm. to the actual lynching. We haven't been able to come up with anything that confirms it, mm -hmm. but that's what our uh, suspicions are. Because your great, your great grandfather, Frank Dixon, Yes. Also, he also was, disappeared. Which is Lonnie Dixon's father, 
also yes. disappeared during that time. Yeah, he disappeared at that time, and my grandmother, Johnny Elizabeth Dixon Moorhead, she was eight years old at the time, and she uh, that's the last time she saw her father when she was eight. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yes, uh, and we believe those disappearances are connected somehow. Uh, so, mm -hmm. a 20... Two-year-old mm -hmm. uh, John Carter was not in the Little Rock directory, but uh, because at the time the what most western boundary of Little Rock was somewhere around what we now know as University Avenue, mm -hmm. and the lynching occurred outside of the boundaries in what is now known as the intersection of Twelfth, Canis, and Rodney Parham. And if you go up that Canis Hill and you make a left, uh, that's the Bull Park area. Well, that Bull Park area was then known as one of the three Panky editions. Uh, Josephine Panky. Yes. Uh, she was a real estate magnet. Mm -hmm. uh, is that the correct word, magnet? Uh, <laughs> tycoon. <laughs> and what she did is she bought up land and created these uh, black towns, self-contained black developer. towns. Developer. That's yeah. I like that word better. Mm -hmm. uh, and so one of her additions was in what's now known as Bull Park. And this is where the search occurred mm -hmm. for the 22-year-old John Carter yeah. that was ultimately hanged. And uh, he was found in... He in, was found in, in the tree, wooded area. In the wooded area. In a tree, tree, one of the by trees. one of the uh, mob members. Yes, after a day-long search for him. Right. It was that evening. And the photo that you saw, uh, uh, if you had a chance to get one of the, um, the programs. programs, was a photo. You should, you should provide that program, a link to We will program. definitely provide a program link uh, so that you can uh, view the, the photo and also um, view our some of our partners and the folks that uh help to contribute yes. to to Long the ceremony list of names of organizations and um, individuals that were part of this the the photo that you saw was a photo taken of john carter before he was hanged so With his hands his bound, hands are like in his lap seat. but he uh a picture was taken of him he's sitting in the vehicle of one of the mob members uh vehicle waiting at that time again to be hanged so um can you continue with the talk that you had was that all the information that you had on well the talk what what we'd that? like to do is mm -hmm. again provide a link to yes. uh the talk uh race rage and resistance uh through the central Arkansas library system in the blog mm -hmm. so that you will be able to watch that whole and we, we actually provided it when we first made the announcement about the John Carter Marker Ceremony. We also provided the link for Rage, Rage, and Resistance, uh, hoping uh, that uh, folks would like look at that, uh, mm -hmm. that segment and learn a little bit more about the, the not just the history and the story, but also the fact-finding that happened also uh, there we will provide a link to a, an award-winning documentary by Corey Isabel, Native. Vilified. Yes. Native of Little Rock. Yeah. And uh, he created this documentary after his son came home from school one day, mm -hmm. asking him, you know, Dad, I uh, why haven't I learned this in school? Uh, racial issues, yeah. And he had to sit down and have a talk with his son and said, well, instead of us waiting for the history classes to catch up with us, mm -hmm. let's create a video series. Yes. So Right. And so the documentary Vilified came from that about the story and connection to uh, Lonnie Dixon and John Carter's yes. story. Uh, and again, we, we say this in, in the spirit of love, knowing that um, there's been a lot of this story being unveiled and we're so grateful for it because more importantly the information about the atrocities that happened uh with with racial terror lynchings in the state 
uh, is important information to get out. But what we want to always do is be accurate in that historical documentation yes. and that historical uh, narrative. Narrative. The story that's been right. told. And so that's what we, we wanted to do. Again, we want to thank everyone who spoke on it, everyone who wrote about it. But we had to make that distinction and correction. And this, um, and this is not to discount oh, absolutely the 38-year-old John no. Carter who disappeared right. but was not lynched. Right. His, he also was a human being. Absolutely. And he, uh, his disappearance is connected and yes. should be also part of the story. Absolutely. Should also, right, be part of the story. Um, and his family, the Mosaic Templars Culture Center, also some years back uh, interviewed and had a descendants talk with the John Carter who who is missing or who went who was who missing, went missing. Through, during that time. And so there has been some um, descendant talks about uh, the 38 year old John Carter that was missing. So we want to thank the Mosaic Templars Cultural Center for that. Uh, we are very excited in the fact that we, we are working in partnership with them to um, do some extra work toward uh, making that area because you have to understand when John Carter was lynched on Canis and 12, 12th and Canis, his, after his body was riddled with bullets, he was then his body was then taken and put on the back of a vehicle and was dragged down into the black community and into the uh at ninth and the Broadway. ninth and Broadway and into the line, which is it was called the line, which it was the the black uh, business the heart district of the black business on district. ninth and Broadway. And so and, and uh what yes. we're doing is we're working with the Mosaic Templars to get that intersection renamed John Carter Square. So yes. uh, that's a little bit of a feat because we have to work with two different governments, the state of Arkansas and the city of Little Rock to get that done. But we are working on it. We are working with it. And we thank, we thought, we thank the uh, city of Little Rock for showing up. Uh, the mayor's office, we appreciate all of the support and the, uh, the help there. And, um, and all of the organizations, again. Uh, we were talking about Corey Isabel's uh, son and, yes. you know, coming home from school, wanted to know more, hearing certain things, uh, certain names being called and other things or whatever negative thing that was happening with him. Um, and we're, you know, we're talking about history, accuracy in history, but how important is telling the story? How important is knowing history and, um, our children knowing the history, not not for what people think, which is, oh, it's going to traumatize them, it's going to make... No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about understanding what has happened so that it will never happen again. So we can take well, steps toward making sure that we are humanizing, we are respecting, we are including, we are doing all of those things to make for, uh, for a more just and better world how important is that well uh i think that we are at a juncture that we need to kind of step back from and revisit because right now the discussion is on critical race theory that's what everybody's talking about about around the united states right. and they're confusing critical race theory with the teaching of history those are two totally separate things. Critical race theory is a uh, is a philosophy that was created uh, in law schools, mm -hmm. and it's to have law school students uh, do a critical analysis of how laws and policies uh, cre not only create but perpetuate racism and racist uh, mm -hmm. societies, racist cultures. Uh, so uh, to confuse that with the just the hit the teaching of history because that's what we really need to be focused on is the teaching of history uh, that kind of demeans mm -hmm. the teaching of history. So I just think that it's so important that uh, we honor 
uh, the hard work that historians, particularly these historians here in Arkansas, mm -hmm. me being a uh, board a member of the Board of Trustees of the Arkansas Historical Association, uh, we have some very hardworking historians Absolutely. that uh, spend a lot of time, a lot of time off the clock, mm -hmm. you know, really diving and getting in, into and finding out this yeah. truth and then publishing. Mm -hmm. Did I say it correctly? Delving. Delving. I said, what did I say? Dubbing? Delving. <laughs> D-E-L-V-I-N-G. That was cute. Yes, it's very important. Uh, and so, thank you for that, um, that explanation. And that, the, you know, so that we can understand because there there is a lot of conversation around it and uh, and we want to make sure that we're not mixing things up and yeah. you know making them be uh what most folks who are afraid of uh history and and the unfolding of history and what the only thing for me it, the thing that is important about it is it's not the atrocities are the atrocities and they're what they are. But what we have to get past is and we have to understand is that we will never know, never understand, never fully be able to um, know what to do. That's number one. You know, 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 what, know what to do if we don't know what our past history is. If we don't know how it okay. connects with the rest of the past, world. If, being right, the present, right, being the future. Right. If we don't know our state's history, we don't know, again, how it connects with the broader uh, world. You know, we if we don't know these things, we don't know how, what to do, what not to do, what was already done. Well, um, here is... And, and it's important. But here's the thing is, you just talked about our, our state's history. One thing that I've learned about just in the short decade that I've been really delving into. Say it again. Uh, uh, delving. <laughs> twice already. Delving into Arkansas you state history uh -huh. is, Arkansas state history is fascinating. Mm -hmm. It is really fascinating to learn our history but it's it's it hurts me that it's not taught mm -hmm. in K through 12 schools. And I mean we have we have difficult and challenging history. We know that, but we can't run from it. No. Uh it's going to be there. It's going to be told um and uh and we have to be able to face it. Mm -hmm. And reconcile with it and also to move past it and those and that process is a process of healing yes okay it's a process of healing for both the descendants of those who were victims or victims or actual survivors of it the families of the surviving of uh, victims and also those who who ancestor were were a part of this type of this type of injustice so that's the only way we're going to be able to to get through this well, is for us to face it. Well, let, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. um, just you within the last, what, 74, 72 hours, uh, the uh, United States Congress, the Senate and the House have passed a new law that makes uh, Juneteenth a federal holiday. Uh, what do you think about that? Oh, so we're going into Juneteenth right now? Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I was trying to find a quote, and I'm going to find it because I'm big on quotes, and I think they're, you know, one of those things that you, you need to have a quote in your back pocket every chance you get. Uh, but I'll find it. So what do I think about Juneteenth, about the federal government and uh, it becoming a federal holiday? I think it's I think it's about time. I'll say that it's I'll say it's about time. Um, I think it's a step forward um, in recognizing and uh, commemorating Juneteenth. 
and the history of enslavement and um, and also the history of enslavement and uh, connecting to freedom or some some semblance of freedom and liberation um, so yes I think a holiday will allow for edu more more education it will allow for um, more people to to be able to again celebrate in a commemorative way to where there is there is celebration of of the liberation and the freedom but there's also the education around it i think that holiday allows more for that and so i really appreciate uh the step forward i'll say that i do want to read this quote by maya angelou mm -hmm. and she she says this because this is a quote we had up um during the second half of the ceremony at the Little Rock Center High Historic Site. And it says, History, despite its wretched pain, cannot be unlived, but if faced with courage, courage, need not be lived again. And that was, this is from Dr. Maya Angelou. And so, wanted to share that because it's basically what I was saying is, we don't have to do this again. Uh, we can, uh, we can, learn we can heal and grow and we can provide some restorative and transformational justice to communities that have suffered this atrocity in america mm -hmm. and so that's what needs to happen yes. and that's what we're working toward and i hope that you are also uh, um, in the same energy in the same mindset that we are in and making sure that we are all moving forward uh, together. And one thing that, and we can close out on this note, but mm -hmm. I really would like for you to kind of tell us where you are moving to because uh, you just won a fellowship that uh, actually will give you uh, some, some powerful tools and some powerful access uh, that will really help you to help Arkansas move forward in uh, taking our history to another level where it becomes a way that we use the history to heal historical traumas. Well, I uh, thank you, Kwame, for bringing that up. Um, so. I, I'd say we were in Tulsa at the time um, mm -hmm. and about, I would say about a couple of weeks before before we actually went to Tulsa, we, um, I got an email from Dr. Um, Eric, uh, last name? Um. <laughs> I want to say Brumhouse, but I know that's not it. No, Weaver House Brown. Weaver House Brown. Yes, of ULR. Sorry, Eric. Uh, and sending this information because he he's always because he's the one of the um, professors of the which department? Public policy. Public policy. Okay, and visited South Africa for their truth and reconciliation on the commission and all of those wonderful things. And so we really, really, truly appreciate all of the work and the help that he's given. But he sent, us, sent this to us. Um, and I want to shout out the Donald Wood, director of the uh, current director of the uh, Just Communities of Arkansas, who is one of our partners who then said, Clarice, I think you'll be great for this, kind of bringing it to my attention mm -hmm. um, because I was we were so focused head on right deep into to trying to make, trying to do these two things, which was going and being uh, some, a uh, investigative, you know, doing a little investigative journalism for uh, the Tulsa Centennial and also getting together the John Carter Memorial Marker at the same yeah, time. we were doing that simultaneously. So that was happening at the same time. And so I 
totally missed it in email but he brought it to my attention so i was like hmm read it and it was uh cultural vistas it was is a new transatlantic um program that is building a diverse and inclusive culture of remembrance mm -hmm. so i say decor or decor is the name and what it does is it actually is a group of about 16 or so cohorts um 18 here in the united states and 18 in germany i mean eight eight rather. right okay and and then, this okay and we are uh chosen we you know you had to apply for the fellowship um and again i was i was so caught up trying to make sure that i was doing these other things that i was like you know what I'm going to just, I'm going to go for it because I think it's an amazing program just from reading it mm -hmm. that uh, I'll just see what happens. Mm -hmm. And I did it and then I really didn't think about it afterwards. And then I, while we were in Tulsa, I was going in through my, right, going through my emails every morning and I had a congratulations, you know, mm -hmm. we, we look forward to you being one of the fellows. So this is amazing. It's it's yes. a wonderful and very it's it's an amazing opportunity because it's basically this program again, like I said, is building a diverse a diverse and inclusive culture of remembrance. Mm -hmm. Not just uh here but also in Germany and they they're doing that work. And you're learning from how Germany right. handles. Yes. These and things. how they implement these diverse inclusive um spaces of remembrance and it's some amazing work i have some amazing fellows they i mean when i say when i say heavy hitter f fellows i mean i truly mean it to the point where i'm just like i'm part of a cohort of these dynamic anthropologists sociologists mm. psychologists mm. uh writers um archaeologists i mean it's just uh, you know, pop, you know, uh, uh, um, they, they, they are, uh, just like, I'm almost speechless because <laughs> I get to be a part of this amazing and dynamic group. Yeah. And so <clears throat> I'm very excited about learning and growing from this group of individuals and having German cohorts and it being again, this transatlantic um diverse group of individuals who are professionals looking to uh learn and grow from one one another mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. see how we can create these spaces of diversity and inclusive inclusion right in, here in Arkansas. right in remembrance and gosh it's so important to the work of remembering and also um bringing humanity to those who were who we think were forgotten um but but the the, the whole purpose is to make sure that they're not forgotten mm -hmm. and that we uh bring shed light and bring some arts and activism into that space so i'm very grateful and um, I'm proud of you that you've you so done much. that. So. Thank you so much. So I, I just wanted to share that with you. And that will be going on. Uh, my first class was today. Uh, met my cohorts. So will we be able to uh, film our Arkansas PBS blog from Germany? I don't Is know. We're looking forward I'm to? hoping. <laughs> I am truly hoping that we You're gonna will. You're going to allow Lauren and I to go with yeah, you? Yeah, of course. Okay. Uh, possibility that I, I will go, and I'm very excited that if, uh, if that happens. Um, typically, it does, but because of COVID, we're all virtual. Um, but mm. we we're typically here and in Darn. Germany, but in, 20, but in 2022, <laughs> 2022, then we uh, we should be visiting and um, being able to be a part of that, and also uh, you know creating these spaces. So I'm, again, I'm very excited about it, and just wanted to share that with you. Thank you all so very much. I all appreciate. Right. It. Thank you, Kwame. You are welcome.
<laughs> Thank you all so much. And we'll provide links for you. Uh, happy Pride. We didn't get a chance to say that it in our last. Happy Pride Month. Yes, Pr Pride Month. Happy June well, June. Well, you Juneteenth will already be happening, I'm sure. Or we. Yes, I hope you enjoyed Juneteenth, and I hope you learned so much, and I hope that you had a wonderful Father's Day. Um, and uh, fathers, uncles, yeah. brothers, I'll, I'll father figures, everyone who uh, has. I'll be looking for my tie and my handkerchiefs. <laughs> No, that's not what I give him. So he's, <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot the belt too. No, <laughs> you deserve much more than that. Trust me, uh, with all the work you've been doing. And congratulations, somebody has graduated several times. From uh, three different programs this, this week. So I'm so very proud <laughs> of him. And about to get ready to go to law school or the Clinton School and the Clinton school and his dual program. Service. So yay, Kwame. <laughs> Thank you all. We appreciate you. And thanks again. And peace, guys. Peace. Bye.